Hey friends, I hope you're all doing well. So um, let's take a look at what's changed since last time. I have uh, some delicious hot water. Mm. I'm sorry if this is going to seem a little bit rambly, but um, we're just going to go through it um, from the top. So um, this version is 0 0.248 and uh, there was a few things that were resolved. So the first one uh, was this um, th this error message you get when when you export a page from Notion or sub pages, then there is some times where uh, we're either missing a file or uh, yeah, some attachment in the document is missing. So when you try to um, import that uh, to Notion to Anki, it will give you an error message. And I think this was an actual legitimate error in the past, but there are certain users who have been experiencing this error, missing relative path something something, and that's basically stopped them from using Notion to Anki. So I thought, okay, let's downgrade this from an error to, an, uh, to a warning. And then it turns out that it actually works for them and uh, there were no missing images. So I think um, there's been some bugs with uh, the relative paths and how we're checking. If you have more than one thing in the zip file, we're figuring out where this one thing is. Another bug that was uh, solved and this was actually uh, something that was contributed. Thank you, Max, if you're watching. He uh, fixed it so that we are no longer removing um, tags. Uh, there are some cases where if you use tags in Notion to Anki, it's basically a strike through in the text. But if you have that text both in the in the heading, uh, in the front of the card and the back, there were scenarios where we could replace that because we weren't replacing it properly. So he fixed it so we're only replacing the actual strike throughs and not the text occurrence of it. So if you had a tag which uh, also was repeated in the title, that's no longer removed. So if you experience that issue, um, that should be now gone. Yeah, so we also made a few changes to closed deletions, um, just minor stuff. So we used to have some emojis in the past where if you had the, uh, the number emojis, you could pick the closed deletion stuff, but it didn't really work in practice. Uh, I don't know if anybody was using it. I, I don't think so. I couldn't find any YouTube videos on it. Like I, I thought I had made a video on it, but I probably didn't. So um, I changed it so you can now manually specify the closed deletion number. So you can say C1, C2, C3, C4, and so on. And maybe I will have uh, in the post editing, I will have some text in the screen so you understand what I mean if you are not familiar with closed editions. So that's uh, gonna be better. And also somebody was uh, uh, on Reddit was saying that the text alignment on the closed deletion cards was centered. And to be honest, I had seen that before, but I didn't really mind it uh, because I was, I use Notion to Anki, or I use Anki on iPad and other devices. So I like that it's centered, but it doesn't really look that well. So we changed the closed deletion template to not have the text uh, center the head the top part the pretext the heading is still centered but the body is left aligned now so uh, hopefully that's not going to cause any issues for people who are using it in non-english languages so make sure to let me know if there's anything in that recently broke for you or that looks weird just send me a, an example screenshot and then i'll take a look let's see what else did we change um yeah so i um I made some changes uh, that are, they don't have any functional value, but they're gonna make it easier for us to work uh, faster on the code base. So um, that was just some cleanup, adding more tests, uh, specifically now for closed deletions and uh, also uh, migrating all of the server components uh, over to uh, JavaScript because the tooling is so much better in JavaScript land compared to Imba. Imba is amazing language, I, I love the language. But um, for the server parts right now, we want to get over to just vanilla JavaScript so we can move faster. And when the Notion API is available to us, because it's not, it's very, it's in a private uh, uh, waiting list invite only. When it becomes public, we want to be able to just rewrite a lot of code really fast. And uh, uh, the JavaScript uh, tooling and all of that uh, jazz is just great to have. I'm very excited about the Notion API. We still haven't uh, received any response. This is what Notion is saying, right? Notion API private beta. 
we're getting ready to roll out our API, but first we want to make sure we nail the functionality our users want most. If you're a developer who'd like to get an early peek in exchange for your feedback, we'd love to get to know you. When you sign up here, we send you updates on how the API is shaping up and you'll be on the list for early access to both the public beta and our developer community. Before anybody comments, I have already joined the API beta list. I want to get my hands on it, but I think like our project might not be so interesting for them. So let's look at the frequently asked questions. When is the API launching? Right now we're testing a private beta of the API with a small number of users and a limited scope of features. This will help us discover and fix bugs, test the performance and reliability of the API and help us decide which features to launch with the public beta. We know this has been a top request for a while. We want to get it right. By signing up above, you'll be among the first to gain access to the beta and our early developer community as soon as they open. We're aiming to launch in spring 2021. So when is spring 2021? It looks like it could be March, right? So June. So if everything goes good, and you guys can see that I'm uh, Norwegian by the text here. Uh, it's supposed to uh, say Monday uh, here and Saturday there. So basically between Saturday 20th March and uh, Monday 21st June. So if we're lucky guys, it's gonna be on my birthday. So let's see what happens. Okay, let's see what's the next question here. What should I expect after signing up? We'll keep you in the loop on all things API. Keep an eye on your inbox for regular updates about our progress. Ask me anything with our API team. Questions so we can better understand your API needs and wants and more. When the public API launches next year, we'll, want your, we'll grant you access immediately. No guarantees, but members of this list may also be asked to check out the API early as we look for more feedback. Yeah, so I signed up. I think what happened after I signed up was um, I got uh, like a form to fill out, a few questions about how I was intending to use the API. And basically from that, I think like this is... Uh, not something I know for sure, but I'm trying to recall what what was in the form. And basically from what I understood, it seems like they were prioritizing um, enterprise usage, like people for, uh, within companies using it. So, um, so our application is probably considered tiny or small uh, in, in viewing it in that lens. Anyways, let's look at the last question here. So. What features will be included in the public beta? The list hasn't been finalized yet, but we're making with a small number of private beta users to ensure we're prioritizing the features users want most. Sign up for the waitlist above and we'll let you know how we're thinking along the way and ask for your thoughts too. So uh, this is not, um, I don't think they have official list, but I've seen some of the emails on the waitlist uh, that they send. Everything we want to do should be possible uh, from uh, the, what I've seen on the email uh, list. And also I think they had a blog post somewhere that was talking about uh, there were two APIs or two types of usage. Uh, one was the content API and then the other was uh, some provisioning thing. So the content API is the one we care about. We don't care about the provisioning API. We just care about the content. We're not creating users. We want our users to be able to get the data. And uh, yeah, so um, as soon as we get this access, we can start uh, using it and then consuming the API. And uh, to be honest, I hope they have some kind of authorization scheme and all of that so that or login so we don't have to application wise you don't have to deal with the user if you look at the patreon api for example the patreon guys like they've done it a little bit different and i, I really don't like how the way they've done it um let's take a look at it actually so if you if we look at the uh, patreon uh developers well, what they're saying or the what the patron is saying with is uh, oauth explains simply put oauth allows both creators and patrons to connect their patron accounts to third-party services. If you're not familiar with OAuth, Stormpath has a great article explaining what OAuth is. Yeah, so this is what they're saying. Connect with Patreon, not sign up with Patreon. While many people are familiar with OAuth from things like login with Facebook, it's important to note that Patreon's implementation of OAuth is not intended to serve as an authentication layer for third-party services, but rather as a way to connect once Patreon user details to pre-existing account on third-party services. 
Restate this simply, don't use Patreon OAuth as the primary login mechanism for your site, only as a way to connect a user's Patreon profile to a user profile on your site. Doing otherwise will create very serious security vulnerabilities on your site. Okay, we don't need to uh, read the implementation. I actually did go ahead and try to implement this and I, I did it for one reason primarily and that was because I was evaluating uh, adding quota limits on Notion to Anki but even though I got it working on a local branch and um, all of that and I could prohibit access uh, if you weren't a patron I decided that I don't think that's the right way to go yes I, um, I wish uh, the project was uh, um, always reflecting the usage right um, I don't know how many people are using uh, the project because I'm not tracking it uh, like, like point to point. I stopped the Google Analytics stuff because I, it's not the motivating factor for me. It's better to actually make sure that we are helping people and being available on Discord. So that we have over 200 people on Discord, I consider that uh, that success, <laughs> even though, um, yeah. So. Uh, we're not going to do the quota limit uh, thing, but the point with uh, looking at that was like, I hope Notion solves the OAuth thing in, in the sense that they provide the login. So you, you as an application developer, you can uh, just create your application. You don't have to have a uh, authentication thing, but you can just use Notion and then Notion will make sure that you're logged in and then uh, handle the authorization, authentication stuff. And then you just consume the API as a user, right? The user is authenticated, you are authorized, you just do what you have to do or what you want to do. Instead of, I don't like, I don't want to create a own user database on tuanki.net. I tried uh, setting up a database and I was considering going that route, but I would much rather not have to deal with the, that, like the user management and all of that stuff. Not interested, let's focus on the actual, um, problems and also my time is really limited so uh, growing a SaaS application um, uh, yeah that's not um, that's not the way I the way I'm going um, there's nothing wrong with that approach it's just it's not where I want to be I, I want to provide the tool free to everybody anywhere in the world so whoever wants to can use it regardless of having a patron account or not so for me, anything that can reduce friction on my side is fantastic. So in this case, uh, the OAT stuff, if Notion just handles it and we're just using, uh, or we could set up, um, so in the new, when we update Notion to Anki later in the future, maybe we're gonna have uh, sign in with uh, Notion. And then when you sign in with Notion, you're authorized, we get access to your pages. This way we have eliminated the zip file. So um, yeah. I think um, I think definitely that's the, that's the way to go. Um, this other way with, for example, limiting usage on uh, the ad uh, website and then uh, making you force you to become a patron and then managing another user database. So if you're not technical, you probably don't understand what I mean. But in order to, if since Patreon doesn't want you to use the API as a uh, as an authentication layer, then you have to maintain your own uh, database of users, right? You have to keep track of who's still a patron, who's still paying, and all of that is work, work that you have to do, code that you have to write, and I, I, I'm not interested. <laughs> I'm not interested. That's not the problem I want to solve. That's, that's not where I want to spend my time. I would much rather um, try to help uh, people who ask me for stuff and then try to make these uh, YouTube videos uh, on tutorials and then status updates, what's going on and actually work on the code. That's more fun. That's uh, um, that's where I think I'll, I would be providing value, not trying to turn um, Notion to Anki into a profitable business. So uh, yeah, I hope that didn't sound too rambly, but um, we're trying out different things. So uh, yeah. Enough with the glare. You guys can see the glare in my eyes. Um, I don't know how long I've been talking, so uh, I'll try to uh, do um, more status updates like this. And if you have feedback, you can always uh, let me know in the comments uh, below or uh, DM on Discord uh, uh, or um, Patreon, wherever you're watching this, because this is gonna go out first to Patreon and then I'll wait maybe a few uh, days and then put it out on YouTube. 
So yeah, uh, for the amazing patrons watching, thank you very much for the support. I feel that now we have reached a point where um, we can definitely be able to uh, cover the cost, grow the server. Uh, the thing is like with uh, user base is like we don't know when the spikes are. So we have we have been having a few spikes. Uh, and the reason why I know it spikes is because we can actually just look at how much upload bandwidth, like traffic, actual traffic is growing through the site. Or, I mean, not the site, the server, which is handling the traffic. So, um, yeah, so hopefully we, we, we will continue to get more users who are using the project. And uh, that would uh, hopefully also be reflected with uh, the support uh, either on Patreon, GitHub sponsor or also PayPal. People are donating uh, via PayPal, thanks a lot. And that money just goes straight to the server cost. And um, we'll be able to renew the DigitalOcean sponsorship, I think it's in November, I think. Uh, and then we're gonna get $60, so that's nice. Um, that's a few months of server stuff. And yeah, I'm also gonna look into, um, maybe we're gonna upgrade the server, we have to see because if uh, or we, maybe we're going to change the architecture maybe we're going to have a load balancing thing where or we could have uh, a spin up right where a server is started if the main server has too much traffic uh, too much uh, cpu or too little resources to handle the incoming traffic but there is also the disk issue um yeah so let's not go too deep into these topics i hope uh, that gave you an overview of the current status and uh, talk to you soon. Bye.